we're here inviting all kids to experience great crafts, explore Bible fun activities, and win prizes. Yes! yes. Prizes. prizes! My faith has grown in leaps and bounds. My relationship with God has grown closer. Job 42.10 tells us, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. With all Job had to endure, he had a secret. He forgave his friends, and the Lord gave him double what he lost. Yes, the pain that family and friends may cause, whether intentional or not, is real. In Jesus' name, we pray for the healing of deep wounds, disappointment, and rejection. And may the Father heal, restore, and comfort like only He can. May God open a new chapter for you as you walk out this process of healing and forgiveness. Come and visit us. Now, join Pastor Paul and Word Mission Church family. And he's saying that the person who hears God's word and does them will be the one who is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains come, the floods come, the wind blew and beat on that house, but the house still stands solid. It does not fall. There are so many sources of tests, trials, of the things that we go through. The thing that I'm going through, is it God testing me? The thing that I'm going through, did I bring it up myself as a result of mistakes that I made? If I did, then let me learn the lesson and then move on. Or is it the enemy? You see, you have to realize that we have an enemy. The Bible calls him the devil or the adversary. He's opposed to us. His goal is to defeat us. Where is this thing coming from? But then we also have to realize that based on where we are in our Christian walk, God will test us. If your kids or my kids or kids went to school and at the end of the school year we asked them, where is the report, the report card? Or they went to school and after a while they came and they would, they would start rejoicing and saying, Daddy, we like this school, we like this school. What do you like about the school? We like the fact that when we go to school we don't get tested. They, keep just, they will just keep promoting us. <laughs> <laughs> they will keep promoting us and letting us keep going to the next level without any test. And at the end of the school year, I ca we come and then you ask them, where is the report? And they will be like, oh, no, there is no, this school, there is no test. They do whatever they want. I will be like, what? We need to have a discussion here. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a discussion. So it's very, very important to realize that in our Christian walk, we will be tested. Then there are different seasons of life as well. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. I'll highlight some points from last week and then we'll continue. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He says, therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Same conditions, different results. And he's saying that the person who hears God's word and does them will be the one who is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains come, the floods come, the wind blew and beat on the house, but the house still stands solid. It does not fall. For the one who is building on sand, the same conditions come, but that person's house doesn't survive. 
So, so we go through tests, we go through a storm, we go through I mean, difficulties, we go through different seasons of life. But what will make us stand, the difference between the one who will stand and the one who will not stand is the one who is doing the word of God. Today, I want us to go a step further in our lesson here. And, and why do we go through tests? Why do we go through trials? What's the reason? Seven reasons why we go through test trials and sometimes even temptation. Turn with me to Luke chapter 4 verse 1. You have to realize Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says that the Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from Jordan and was led by the spirit into the wilderness being tempted for 40 days by the devil and in those days he ate nothing and afterward when they had ended he was hungry he was filled with the spirit and the very next thing that we see was the bible says he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted, to be tested. Wow. <laughs> Jesus. If Jesus was tested, or uh, he was, uh, he, you see, he had to pass. You see, in the beginning, Adam and Eve sinned against God, and they were got separated from God. So the test that Adam and uh, Eve failed, Jesus has to pass that test. And when he, so the first reason why we are tested is that God, God, you see, when God tests us, he wants to, he wants to, he will take us through a process. Sometimes when we go through a wilderness, when we go through a dry season, we go through a season in life, we don't understand what is going on. He's being led to be tested to see whether he will pass the test that Adam, Adam failed. In the wilderness. And so many times we, we, we are Christians. We've come to God. We believe God. We have faith. You see, the Bible says, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, talks about the fact that this is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. So our faith in God will be, will be tested. We established that last week. And so, and, and, and so it's very, very important when God tests us, he's going to check whether we believe like we say we do. Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. Deuteronomy 8 verse 1 to 3. Thank you, Lord. He says, every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember that the Lord your God, notice this phrase, led you all these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you and to know what was in your heart, whether you will keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your father, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of of the Lord. Where do you remember this verse? Jesus quoted this verse to the devil when he was tempted on the mountain. He tells you here the reason why they were led into the wilderness. He says, number one, to humble you. One of the reasons why he tests us is to test our character. So many times, we, 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 I mean, he says to humble you and to test whether you, what was in your heart. God wants to check what is in this person's heart. What is in there? When it gets difficult, the wilderness is a dry place. When life gets difficult. When things happen, maybe, I mean, a, a sudden loss of a job, a sudden loss of a relationship, something happens. 
and it seems like it's a dry place, what will this person do? Would they throw their hands in the air and say, no, I give up? To know what was in your heart. So if Jesus was tested, then where does that leave you and I? We will be tested. Every lesson that God teaches us, he will test us based on the level where we are. We just learned about the fruit of the spirit not long ago. And when you learn about the fruit of the spirit, one of the fruit was self-control. And if, we, if you're on the road... And you don't exercise self-control on that gas pedal. <laughs> Sooner or later, you will see flashing lights behind you. <laughs> you will get tested, what, whatever the lesson is, to know what is in your heart. Whether you will keep the word of God or not. But I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, when we are tested, may we pass the test that come our way in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, say amen. amen. To establish his character in us, we will be tested. So you will face a test. I mean, whether you will choose the right way or the wrong way. You may be out uh, 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 in, 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 the, in the workplace and everybody is doing the wrong thing. What foundation are we building on? Through the decisions that we face, we have a choice. I will build, make a decision that you build your house on a solid character. To, 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 based on Jesus Christ. These are things that we cannot run away from. Number three, we go through tests and trials to enlarge our capacity, to broaden our capacity for, for truth. Psalm chapter 4, verse 1. Psalm chapter 4, verse 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Notice what he says. He says, hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness, you have relieved me in my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Another translation says, the key James puts it this way. He says, you have enlarged me when I was in distress. We can take the distress that we go through. We can take the test that we go through. We can take, take the trials that we go through. And God, he puts it this way. He says, you have enlarged me. And I've, I've used it as an opportunity to grow. In my walk with God. You see, sometimes when you have gone through a certain test, a certain trial, and you overcome, you have a ministry. God gives you a ministry by which you can comfort others as well who are going through the same thing. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. The father, I like that phrase, the father of mercies. That means there is not only one mercy. There are so many mercies. He comforts us. He enlarges us. And comforts us in our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. I used to be this way. Now God has transformed my life. And now I'm like this. I overcame in this area of my life. And so now I can be able to help somebody that is going through that same circumstance. But so many times when we are in any kind of trouble, when we are in any kind of tribulation, the easiest thing to do is to complain. 
That's what the children of Israel did. That kept them for 40 years longer in the wilderness than they were supposed to have been. Oh, Lord, you know, this is so difficult. It's difficult. This test, the key scripture, notice what he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Notice what he says. If necessary, God will test our faith. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. He says, in this, you greatly rejoice. Though now, for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. If need be. What is the purpose? What that is the reason why you have to understand? Number one, why do I go through tests? Number two, what is the purpose of it? And number three, how do I overcome? So he says that the genuineness, verse 7, of your faith. Be much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Whom, having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. <laughs> you see, every, the purpose of God teaching us is so we can test us. We like the teaching piece. We like to come to church. We like to read the word of God. We like to rejoice. And, and, and we like to jump and scream and shout and say, this is good teaching. This is good preaching. I am enjoying the word of God. Like we use that term, I'm soaking in the word of God. My Lord, the word of God is blessing me. My Lord, this word is getting in my heart. But remember, oh, that after he taught them in Matthew chapter 5, oh, Matthew chapter 14 is coming where they were in a storm and, and the storm comes against me, comes against, against them. You are on the mountain, oh, listening to the word, but the purpose of teaching is so that we can be tested. And so he says here that, oh, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. What is the purpose of it? The purpose of that test, the purpose of that trial is to check the genuineness of your faith. Do you really believe God like you say you do? Do you really trust God like you say you do? Is God really the Lord, Jesus really the Lord of your life? If necessary, you will be tested. That the genuineness, notice this, of your faith be more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory at the re revelation of Jesus Christ. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that when your faith is tested, may it come out and be like precious gold. May it come out when you come on the other side of that test. When you come on the other side of that challenge. May people look at you. Oh, you may even look at yourself and say, wow, I went through this. And after I came through this circumstance, I'm a better person. I have grown. I have developed. And notice he says, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of of your souls. You see, if you are a Christian, your, your spirit man is already saved. Your soul part still has its being saved. He calls it the renewing of the mind. And then your body, ultimately, at the resurrection, you will experience the final salvation for, for where your body is concerned. But while you are down here, you and I, every day we have to live, your faith will be tested. One day, Abraham... I like Abraham. Abraham, God, in Genesis chapter 22, let's go there. Genesis chapter 22. Notice what the Bible says. Genesis chapter 22, from verse 1, he says, And it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham. Who tested him? Talk to me this morning, please. Who tested him? 
God tested him and said to Abraham, and, and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. What you have to realize is Abraham had used his faith. They had, they had believed God for a child and this is his one and only child. The most precious thing in his life, his child, God comes to him and he says, here's a test. <laughs> Bring your son. What? Bring your son? Yeah. Bring your son. <laughs> Do you wiggle your ears and did I hear right? <laughs> Go away, devil. I rebuke you. <laughs> but he, in obedience, took his son and went. And when it was all said and done, the Bible says in verse 12, he says, And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. Now I know. Now I know. Now I know. Now I know. Now I know that you fear me. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus when you have passed that test, may God testify about you and say, now I know. Now I know this, my child, oh, reverences me. Now I know that this, my child, fears me. Now I know that ah, you have passed that test and you are moving on to the next level in your walk with me. In the mighty name of Jesus, what is God's testimony about you and I? Oh, I pray that he will testify and say, now I know that this person fears me. He's passed that test of faith. He's come out. He or she has come out and is looking like gold on the other side. When it was very difficult, when it did not seem like the right thing to do to obey God, when it did not seem like the right thing to do to serve God, oh, you made a choice. When it did not make, make sense, oh, to yield your life, ah, uh, you did not consider your past. You did not look back on, on, on your past, but you were looking at me and you were considering me. You took that step of obedience and in the name of Jesus now I testify about you that you've passed that test may you pass the test that come your way in the mighty name of Jesus if you believe that say amen, amen. glory be to the name of the Lord number four God will test us so that he can build his character into us James chapter 1 Verse 21, thank you, Lord, along the same lines of being a doer of the word of God. He says, therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able, notice that phrase again, it's here again, to save your souls and be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his face in, a, in, in his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. He says, receive with meekness the implanted word. That word implant is, 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 is almost like to take another plant and put it into another and let that plant conform to the one that it's been implanted into. God wants his nature to be reflected in our lives. He wants to re his nature to, to, to be reflected in our lives. So as we go through, as we become doers of the word, he says that that word is able to save our souls. He wants us to avoid the tragedy of Matthew 7, 23, where he says that, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I, I don't know you. In the name of Jesus, you will not be that one that has that, 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 that testimony. But you will be the one that is a doer of the word of God. You see, the little light that you have, God expects us to walk in it. 
the revelation of God's work that we have, he expects us to walk with it. And then as we walk in that revelation, then we'll keep getting more light. Then we'll keep walking in that which he has for us. But the, the, the thing is that he wants to build his character into us. And God doesn't run a system where if you fail the last test, you get promoted. No, he doesn't, he doesn't run, he doesn't run his, his system that way. <laughs> Sometimes there are areas of our lives where we may be challenged. This, this, this little mouth of ours gets us into big troubles. <laughs> Sometimes it, it, is, it is gossip. And so we keep going around and around the same circle. God will keep checking you, checking you, checking you. Has this person passed this test? So I can move him on to the next thing. He says, be doers of the word of God. Not hear the word and let it go the other, other ear. But every day as we study his word, as we hear his word, we ask, we ask him, the Lord, show me areas of my life where I can live for your glory. Let your word mold me. Let your word shape me. Let your word make me into who you have called me to be. You see, our faith does not immunize us from the trials and the tribulations of life. It does not inoculate us or immunize us. No, 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 no. I mean, read through the Bible. Abraham was dead. We trust part one of this message was a blessing. Be sure to join the Word Mission Church International family and Pastor Paul for part two of this life-changing message tomorrow.